Happy Hanukkah! My name is Lydia Fasha, and I am here to read you The Kvetch Who Stole Hanukkah. Um, by Bill Berlin and Susan Isakoff Berlin, illustrated by Peter J. Welling. The Kvetch Who Stole Hanukkah. In the town of Oyville, in a land far away, the children prepared for each holiday. They read about Passover and the Red Sea parting. They learned of Rosh Hashanah and the New Year starting. But the holiday that tickled every Vicky, Max, and Monica was the Festival of Lights in the season of Hanukkah. They liked the presents, the food, and the cheer. They liked the nights when the family drew near. They pictured Judah Maccabee, his bravery and toil. They imagined the temple, its lights needing oil. When the menorah shone bright, its message was clear. A great miracle happened here. Not everyone in Oyville saw things this way. There was one person who, was, who always said nay. It was the Kvetch who lived high on the hill with his grumpy face and his voice high and shrill. What is a kvetch, you may want to know? What makes him so gloomy? What makes him say no? A kvetch is a person who likes to complain. Where others see sun, a kvetch will see rain. Now, there are times when we all feel quite blue. We can all be kvetchy, that's surely true. But uh, to a kvetch, the world never seems bright. To a kvetch, most things are never quite right. It's not like the kvetch had to be that way, but no one had taught him to let his heart play. There was some kind of sadness that made him not right, that made him see dark where others saw light. So every year on Hanukkah's first day, the people of Oyville would hear the kvetch say, the latkes smell bad, the dreidels make me dizzy, and to hear children laugh puts me in a tizzy. Every year, the same old refrain. These Hanukkah songs, they give me a pain. Hanukkah shmanukkah, it's all about gifts, shouted the kvetch, and he sounded quite miffed. But most of all, what made him take flight was the glow that came from Hanukkah's lights. When the candles burned down, they gave off an aura that made the kvetch hate every menorah. His hate seemed to grow with each passing year till the thought of the lights filled him with fear. He would dream of menorahs and their candles so bright and awaken in terror, dripping with fright. I must gain control. I must find a way to stop dreidels from spinning and children at play. There will be no latkes, no more will they fry, no Hanukkah gelt, no new toys to try. So the kvetch thought and thought and thought some more, sweating and pacing across his bare floor until finally a smile crept over his face. I've got it, he cried and ran out of that place. The darkness of night when Oyville was still, the kvetch made his way down the long winding hill. If you looked really closely, you could see the kvetch creeping, but most houses were dark and most people were sleeping. He sneaked into Oyville on Hanukkah's first night, helped through the dark by the menorah's bright light. Aha, said the kvetch, it's time for my scheme. No more menorahs, not another bad dream. He's a deeply unhappy individual. No lights and no dreidels, no latkes this year, no toys, no presents. His joy was so clear, he snuffed out the candles and turned off the lights and carried menorahs through the dark winter night. When the next day dawned all over town, the children of Oyville cast their heads down. The menorahs were gone, the lights were all out, and no one knew what this was about.
Then they heard it, a most wretched noise, the triumphant sound of the Kvetch's loud voice. Lights out, he yelled with a jubilant cheer. Jubilant, jubilant cheer. There will be no Hanukkah in Oyville this year. He took the menorahs to the top of the hill. He set them all down with unusual skill. And as he turned to see the new day, he saw three children a few feet away. Mr. Kvetch, the children said, you've got it all wrong. The Hanukkah spirit is joyous and strong. The Maccabees taught us to strive to be free, to treasure true justice and charity. The lights and the gifts show our dedication to the strength and faith of our ancient nation. It's a lesson for all when life seems so dim. There's reason for hope. You shouldn't give in. Oh my goodness. My heart. The Kvetch stepped back and looked off into space and a lonely tear rolled down his sad face. But, but, he said as he trembled and shook, the lights were so bright, I've, I've been too scared to look. Perhaps you're afraid to see things so bright for fear that you'll lose them as day becomes night. Maybe you'd rather see things as bleak because somewhere inside you feel frightened and weak. This little girl is so smart. The children stepped forward and took his cold hand, and the Gavetch felt his heart and his spirit expand, and when he looked out all over the town, a smile filled his face instead of a frown. Then the people of Oivo looked up to that hill, and they took in a scene that made their hearts thrill. The menorahs shone bright, as bright as the snow. All the candles were burning, all the lights were aglow. The Kvetch too was beaming. His face was so bright as the children helped him return all the lights and the people of Oyville gave out a great cheer. Another great miracle has happened here. All right, happy Hanukkah y'all. Love you, miss you.